Hello everyone, welcome back to another new episode and today I'm going to talk about SINP which is Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program and I consider this as one of the best and the easiest way of coming to Canada or you can say getting Canada PR and so therefore if you want to come to Canada and would like to know more about the application process, the requirement, document checklist and everything then make sure you watch the video till the end. There are three reasons why I consider this as one of the best immigration program of Canada so far. Uh, the reason number one is, suppose if you have low CRS score or for any other reasons you couldn't qualify for an express entry, then this would be a best alternative for you. Reason number two is that <clears throat> this is a great advantage for those people who have low education, which means even if you have only high school, right? If you have done only high school graduations but have uh, trade certificates, then this is the best uh, program for you. And the third one, which I like uh, the most, is that as we all know that uh, we all have a problem in IELTS, right? So if you have <clears throat> low score in your IELTS, for example, to apply in one of the categories in this program, the IELTS requirement is only four right so which is a very very you know lucrative requirements I therefore I consider this as one of the uh, best programs so far in all the immigrant programs of Canada okay let me tell you a little bit about the objective of this program Saskatchewan one of the beautiful provinces of Canada and the provincial government of Saskatchewan came up with this program in order to fulfill the demand of their skilled workers as well as obviously the population that's the reason they are focusing more on the skills and the trades in this program and now i'd like to take you to saskatchewan through this small video have a look and enjoy it Okay, SINP is divided into four factors or we can say that four streamline of application and the number one is SINP experience class which is for those people who are already in Canada means already in Saskatchewan and have been working here in uh, Saskatchewan it is for them so we are not going to talk about that one so let's keep this aside right <clears throat> and uh, factor number two is SINP uh, employment offer and this one is for those people who have received a uh, job offer and an employment offer from any company of Saskatchewan so again we are not going to talk about this one because it has a similar uh, problem of job offer like we have seen in AIPP which is not very feasible again and factor number three is SINP express entries 
And here, this express entry is totally different than the one, uh, you know, the federal express entry. Okay, so it has a different uh, requirements, different point systems, so which we will discuss later in this video. And the fourth one is SINB occupation in demands. So these are the four uh, major factors, and we are going to discuss about two factors, which is uh, third and the fourth one. Now let's have a look at the basic eligibility criteria for these two factors: SINP express entry and SINP occupation in demand. Let's go to my computer. Now let's have a look at the eligibility criteria. First of all, we'll see SINP for express entry. Okay. The education masters bachelor's and intermediate or here you can see diploma so this is a very good thing if you have any trade certificate or diploma records which is uh, more than one year and less than two years course you're eligible that's a very good thing that's what i was talking about in about this program IELTS requirement is clb7 and which is uh, listening six reading six writing six and speaking six it's band six if you have in IELTS each band six then means you can also apply for this one right and job experience minimum one year SNP which is Saskatchewan nominee points so likewise if you're in your uh, federal uh, express entry there is a CRS score right CRS point which is out of 1200 you have to get at least uh, 440 to 450 which is the current cutoff score right so this is SNP, similar but this is SNP here you have to get minimum 60 points out of 100 and in my next video uh, I will tell you how to calculate these points right how many points are given for each of the category like for your age for your education experience I will show you in the next video and then job category also visit the NOC okay in order to uh, apply for this express entry you have to make sure you have your job is available is listed in NOC you know, and that's not their occupation classifications all right now let's have a look about eligibility criteria for SNP occupation in demand and for that education again same master bachelor and intermediate or diploma same like okay the uh, other uh, express entry or if yes, here you can see if you have a diploma certificate for more than one year, that's a good thing. You can apply for it. IELTS, here it is. This is the one. CLB4 only, where we, if you have only listening 4.5, reading 3.5, writing uh, 4, and speaking 4, you are good to go. You, can, you are eligible to apply for it. And CLB4 is, is very low, you know, it's easy for everybody. And job experience is one year. That's what is it. And I'll also tell you in the next video about uh, the pointing system of the job experience, like how many points you will get for one year, how many points you get for the five years, how many points you will get for the ten year experience. Okay, I will show you in the next video. So that will help you to understand like how much points you can get. It. And SNP points, again the same, 60 out of 100. And job category is here. It's not an NOC. For this one, if you have to apply, then you have to see your job whether it's available there in NOC. So in, in submit an NOC, OID, or means occupation and demand. I will show you. Uh, the uh, this equipment demand list also right what are the jobs currently available so that you will see whether you are there or not and other requirements let's have a look at the other requirements means uh, uh, general requirements which is necessary for both of these categories okay first education you have to do your educational credential assessment okay ECL you have to do it and you have to do it from WES you know that right and another is medical report you need you need also produce clear certificate PCC you also to have a proof of fund so really sorry for the spelling mistake it has to be proof of funds so which means uh, like uh, if you're a single applicant how many uh, dollars you have to show right how much you have to show and like for uh, family of two how much family of three for how much so there is a different rates for each of the um, category okay so and for, don't worry about this one proof of funds also i will show you in the next video right how much you have to show the proof of funds for each of the uh, category next is proof of profession status or licensure so this is for uh, some specific job for example those profession those jobs 
need a license to practice, need a license to operate a business or do a service, right? Like for example, doctors and nurses or engineers. So these are the professions that need a license to, you know, to do a job, right? So here you have to have a license. But here, these things only when after you uh, create a profile, after you submit an applications, and and on in in case if the SIAP like the provincial government, if they ask you, okay. If they ask you for the any uh, certification licenser license, then only you have to supply to them. You have to, then only you have to send, uh, send to them. Okay, just don't send before. And after that, there's a buy battery. So these are the general other requirements. That's all. Okay, that was the basic eligibility criteria. Now, what next you should do to start the application process? What is what should be your next step? All right, so let's talk first of all for applying SINP Express Entry, okay? All of you who are planning to apply for Express Entry, the next step what you have to do is that finding your NOC, that is uh, National Occupation Classifications. You have to find first of all your job, your employment, your skills, whether it is listed in the NOC or not, okay? So if you guys don't know how to find, how to check your NOC, then again, let me take you to my computer system and I will show you step by step in an easy way so that you will understand very well, okay? Let's go. Okay guys, this is the website government of canada official website for express rentry and everything so and this is the website where you will look for your noc code so here you can see there are total unit group 500 so there are total groups of 500 jobs it means there are more than thousands of here so all these jobs are you know they have listed in different different groups like here for example you can see there is a group of uh, major group senior management occupations and the jobs are like uh, legislators and senior management so these are the job titles here you can see right legislators senior government managers and officials likewise down you can see a specialized middle management occupations which are like administrative service managers and the titles are like financial human resources purchasing and other administrative service managers likewise here you can see all the way down on different groups there are different different job titles okay so here you have to go through one by one and you have to look for the job and you can see in its job title there you can see here there's a number okay there's a number given so this is a code this is what we call a code so zero for here you can see zero four one one government manager so this is the noc code and this is the code you have to remember likewise you have to look for all the your job title what's what is your job then you look here if your job appears here that means you are eligible to apply for sinp for an express entry program. So here you see administrative officers, right? And uh, the call is 1221. So if you are an administrative officer, that means yes, your name is appeared here. That's what is it. So you have to go find out your, what's your uh, job title, right? Like it's here, accounting related. So here, another, another option for you is that, like you see, if you feel boring to go all the way down, it may take lots of time, right? So the very easiest way is that just type your number here. You, so your uh, your job title here. So for example, what is your job title? Let's say accountant. Accountant. So here to so you see there are three groups for accountant and job titles. You can see financial managers. So these are the titles you have: assigned public accountants, chief, uh, independent public accountant, chief, or likewise another is accountant account controller, account supervisors, analyst accountant, auditor target accountant, bank, uh, bank branch accountant. So likewise here, see all the job titles are given here. So for all the job titles you can see here, right? All the job titles, what is the code for all of them? Same, 1111, for one. So, so all of you have to use the same code, 1111, for one, right? Whether you are a CPA, CA, whatever you are, CMA, whatever you are going to see, and for everybody you have to use 111 so when you end up create your profile and uh, there's a requirement that is column will come form will come where you have to enter the code you don't need to enter the financial auditors or account in your title just you have to put your code here okay that's likewise so suppose you are electrician so let's search the electrician yes you see there are lots of demands for electricians there are total groups of 11 and 86 job titles are available 
So it's a very good thing. See, aircraft electricians, chief stage electrician, mechanist, uh, machinist electrician, set stage studio electricians, and there are so many titles. And then look, where is your title? Where is your job title? Simple only electrician is also there. Electrician troubleshooter is there. So likewise. So and so these are the place where you have to search your job. Uh, NOC code. Got it? So here, first of all, you have to search this NOC code and then you have to uh, see all the requirements, you have to create all other, uh, you have to, you know, procreate all other required documents. Then you have to start uh, creating your profile. Got it? So I have given this uh, the, uh, website link in my video descriptions. Watch the video first till the end and after that, come back here in this website and again, and then start looking for your job. All right? Okay, that's all. And now for all of you who want to apply for SINP Occupation in Demand. Your immediate next step, what you have to do is that you have to find now, not an NOC, you have to find your job, whether it is listed in OID checklist or not. So I will take you to their official Saskatchewan official website of occupation in demand and we have to see your job whether it is there or not. I will show you and later uh, you can find out by yourself. I will put the link of the website in, down in the video description. Okay, let's go. Uh, here it is. This is Saskatchewan uh, Immigrants and no, uh, Immigrant Nominee Programs official website and you can see here SINP, right, occupation demand list. So here. And, or, and this is the one you know for those who want to apply for SINP occupation and demand category okay so everybody who would like to apply for occupation demand category not an express entry you have to check your job here all right so this is the government of uh, Saskatchewan have listed out all their uh, jobs in demand currently what are they looking for is there is given here you have to see your job here let's see you can see here see first national occupations so the code is given at the right hand, uh, left hand side and then occupational description is here so let you see managers in social and community services right see uh, here is a conference and event planners accounting technicians that means your accountant okay so here all the job titles is given here to so computer programmers and interactive media developers. So here you see if you are a developer, software engineer, computer technology, programmers, there is a good vacancy here now. Talk code is 2174. So all the way you have to, this is the current demand. Okay, medical laboratory technologies is here. All the medical radiation technologies are here. So find out, just take it out. All your job title, if your job title is listed here is available, that means you are good to go to apply for occupational demand for this one you don't need any to have any job offers no nothing okay just apply it, send it I, in the next video i will show you how to start your application process okay so now here you see you will like for example accounting technicians here click it here and it will show you in accounting technicians what are the job titles example job titles are here you see accounting bookkeeper accounting technician bookkeeper right so here if you are bookkeeper accounting technicians then that is what it, is, it means, correct? Right? Because not uh, in your job, right, in, your, uh, in your company, you may not give on the title accounting technicians, you may have a different uh, uh, job title. So to make sure whether your title is uh, available in it, here or not, so just you have to click on this one. For example, like uh, let's click on this uh, computer programmer and then it will show all the titles under computer technicians like this you see application programmer business application programmer computer game developer computer programmer e-business interactive media developer likewise here you see all the job titles are given here so if you are doing currently any of this job title that means there is a vacancy for you which comes under the computer programmers and interactive media developer you see web programmer is here so system programmer here so this is all and for all of you for all these job titles what is the code noc code two one Seven four, okay, two one seven four. This is what you have to remember. Better you note it down in your notebook, and when you create a profile, you uh, fill up the application, mention it there. You have to mention that this call, okay. So that's all, friends. Let's continue the video. Okay, guys, that's all for today, and I will continue the rest in the next video. And in the next video, I'll tell you about how to calculate the points 
also I will tell you uh, the, about the proof of funds what are the amounts required okay and also we'll go how to do it how to create a profile and how to start up your application I will show you everything step by step so stay tuned if you are first time watching my channel then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon so that you will receive the notification of all my future videos and, and if you like this video today and if you find that this is a very informative and helpful then why don't you just hit that like button and you can also send it to your friends and relatives and let everybody know about it and get the benefit by having said these things i will see you next week in another new video until then take care have a good day bye bye